Hey guys, what's up? Today I will be doing another build diary for the highest difficulty. Now this time with the highest damage dealing build, a short build. So we are mainly using short manuals such as fan, brush and dagger. And we're using perfect adaptation to make the most use out of them. But let's talk about my character. It's a class can approach, which means we go for 50 for strength. And as such, we only have 7 constitution, but we make up for having low defense with high damage. We basically burst down the opponent before they get the chance to really act. Or if they can act, we have wall of steel to take care of the first hit. Now, of course, in order to get 54 strength, we need 5 tiger pills. We also need to do poison testing with Meow Zaidi for plus 20 strength at the expense of minus 10 constitution. Now regarding equipment, since we are going for a short build nonetheless, we can easily run Xuan Yuan with its incredible 64.3% damage. As for an armor, you could run an armor. There are some which require, I think, 8 intelligence, 8 luck, somewhere in the lore you can find them. I think Genwu? No? Okay, for example, the Thunder armor you could run or the Beast King armor. That's an armor you could run if you want to. It will make you slightly tankier, but I choose to run with no armor just to get the point across that it's not that needed. As for our amulet, we are actually using a Crime Investigator token now instead of an Imperial Seal, mostly because the new difficulty has the modifier Ignore Accessories. As such, with the Imperial Seal, it's guaranteed parry modifier is ignored and it loses a lot of value. The CIB token actually causes you to deal more damage to the enemy when attacking and since you lose the effect of it when the enemy attacks regardless there is no loss in defense so this is the better option. Now as for the starting traits you can see the list of it right here you actually have quite a few points to play around with. I even took blind immunity because I essentially had nothing else to take. It has slight advantages because if you look at the different brush manuals, okay not this one, but this manual can inflict blinding or blinded, this manual right here can inflict blinded, so there is slight value but it never adds up. We are at 110% accuracy right now with minus 50% due to being drunk. Being drunk is not required either. It offers slight amounts of crit chance, but I'm running 13 sutras anyway, so I have guaranteed crit. The additional evasion does not matter as enemies have such a high amount of accuracy that it's not impactful. And as such, blind immunity while being nice and ensuring that you never are blinded, in essence, does nothing. Now with the new update, we of course got the new Salem and the Meat Skewer buff with 5% final damage. It's easy to obtain, you simply need to go to the western region and do the quest in front of the inn. That's about it. Sure. Now you can see all these damage increase modifiers, they are due to interacting with the different shrines. For example, in your homestead you have a shrine you can pray at. These actually stack with the different sources, so you can accumulate a lot of them. I've showcased this in my throwables only video as well. And that's more or less everything about this page. Now regarding martial arts, you can see my setup right here. I'm running 13 sutras as my main internal, simply because I really like it. You could also choose a different option. Now regarding your main attacks, Spring and Autumn Fan is your absolute main hitter. It deals 412% increased damage, so a 5.1 times 2 damage multiplier and hits like an absolute truck. Should anything survive, like typically you first use a throwable then the skill, should anyone survive that, you then can use a throwable again and Luminary Meteor Strike. This is the new dagger manual introduced in the western region and it can deal up to 375% increased damage. 
Really solid damage, however, it takes a bit of ramping to get your spirit up this high. We are, in fact, running Path of Loyalty and Burning Spirit right here, which means we start with 150 spirit. As such, it has 225% damage right away. And with every instance of increased spirit gain, we get 15. So if we use a throwable, then our Spring and Autumn fan, then we already have plus 30, so it deals 270% damage. It ramps quite quickly to its maximum damage, but is still worse than Spring and Autumn fan. Next up, we have the two brush moves. I rarely have to actually use them, first of all because cycling with throwables, spring and autumn fan and luminary meteor strike is more than enough to get the skills of cooldown again, and secondly because almost nothing survives. Now you have Orchid, Pavilion, Preface with 200% damage, Country Full of Beauties with 150% damage, they actually, or only this one, scales with Blind, which can be inflicted with luminary meteor strike, it's a very slight synergy. Some additional damage, sure, but will never play a huge effect. Also note that the Orchid Pavilion Preface is guaranteed to hit the enemy due to it reducing evasion and parry by 100%. Okay, maybe not guaranteed to hit. If you have 100 blinded, you are not guaranteed to hit, but it's very likely. And as usual, people spawn for all the stat increases, fist increases by 74, sword, blade, long, etc. As that also provides some defense. Now next up, let's talk about the other internals. I currently have Arc Demon, Nine Provinces and Tyrant Play Technique learned. Tyrant Play Technique is almost mandatory as it's an incredible stat stick. It provides 500 additional attack, which is absolutely amazing. No other internal manual does so. Now the other two manuals you can freely switch. You could even forget Nine Provinces, Arc Demon, Soul Eating skill and learn the other two available dagger skills, namely Killer Secret and Media from Outer Space. Now regarding your ultimate, choose whatever you want. I don't know, Buddha Golden Bodies, Seven Buddha Punishment Word. They don't really matter, they don't deal a lot of damage and the fight should end before you even use it. So yeah, that's about it. Regarding our passive tree, due to the passive tree bug being fixed, we sadly lose some value, but it's not that major. First of all, we have the thunder tree. You uh, take the bottom options for the crit damage and most importantly calculated strike. This is a lot of damage, like incredible amounts of damage from the singular node on a class can build. Next up, I picked the fire tree because we get more damage the more strength we have. We have 54 strength, which is incredible, and it's such a lot of damage. Furthermore, collateral damage can help with Reflect if you are not running 13 Sutras, and Continuous Assault is a passive that I really like. It feels really good. For certain solo battles, such as Peak of Jiang Hu, it's not that necessary. You could even respec the tree and get something else, but I don't feel the need to. Now in Mountain we have quite a lot. We pick the topmost node Wall of Steel to ensure we are not being one hit. Like with this we're at least always a two hit. And it can play a role against Lanya simply due to him being extremely fast. The other nodes we have don't really have an impact, our constitution is too low. Each time you parry get spirit, doesn't matter. But here with Unmovable we get 30% damage and we take all the damage we can get. Now with Wind, due to having low arm points, as the bug was fixed, we can't get the last action speed node. Sure, it's minus, I think, eight action speed in battle with scaling. We gotta live with it. But we essentially take all the action speed nodes. And that's more or less it. I think I've covered everything. So if you liked the video, share and subscribe. And have a nice day, everybody.